Hey, what's up guys? Brian Kelly here from Zombie Guitar. Here in today's video, I want to give you five things to focus on as a beginner, which will definitely help to speed up your progress on the guitar. Not only that, but these five things are universal. They apply to all genres. They apply to all styles. And you're pretty much just going to use these five things throughout your entire life as a guitar player. So the first thing that I would suggest to do as a beginner is to learn three full songs. So even if your goal is not to play other people's music and you just want to write your own music, which is kind of how I am, just as a beginner, just the, just the process of learning songs, you're going to learn so much stuff. Like if I tried to write a list of all the stuff that you would learn just by doing this one thing, I'm sure I would leave like 50 things out because there's just so many things you're going to learn. You're going to learn, you know, how to coordinate your right and left hands together. You're going to learn how to have proper finger strength in your fretting hand. Like maybe if the if the song contains bar chords, you're going to have to learn how to push down hard enough to actually make the chord ring. Um, you're going to learn how to learn. You know, you're going to learn how to navigate the internet. You're going to learn how to navigate these different tab sites. You're going to learn, like, there's just so much stuff. So much stuff. Um... So uh, learn one song, learn it all the way through. It may take you three months, it may take you six months, it may take you a year. This really isn't a race, so it doesn't matter how much time it takes. Just get that first song down. And then by the time you go to learn your second song, you're going to find that some of the stuff that you learned in the first song might and most likely apply to the second song. You may see similar chords. You may have similar techniques. You already have some coordination between your left and right hand build up and stuff like that. So all the stuff that you did, all the work that you put into that first song is definitely going to help you in learning your second song. And then by the time you get to your third song, it should even be easier than the first and second song. That's kind of how this goes. As you learn more and more songs, every time it gets easier and easier and easier. So the second thing I would recommend is to learn all the notes on your low E string and A string. Now, when I say to know a note and learn these notes, get yourself to the point where you don't have to think about it. So if you ask a guitar player that's been playing for 10 years what this note right here is on the third fret of the E string, most likely that guitar player is not even going to have to think. They're just going to be like, oh, that's a G. I don't even have to think about it. But if you ask that same guitar player that's been playing for 10 years what that note is on the eighth fret of the B string, some guitar players may be able to do it instantaneously. Other guitar players may have to think about it. They may have to be like, um... Okay, that's a G. The fact that they had to think about it meant that they don't know that note. So the goal here is to know the notes on the low E string and on the A string. Be able to instantly recall these notes like that. Reason being is because all of the bar chords that you play, all the major bar chords and all the minor bar chords, are usually going to be rooted on either the low E string or on the A string. On top of that, all of these guitar systems that are out there, which are pattern-based guitar systems that specifically apply to the fretboard. Like these systems are not piano systems. They're not general music theory systems. They're specifically guitar fretboard visualization systems. Cage system, the five pentatonic positions, the seven three note per string pattern system. These are all guitar specific systems. All of those guitar specific systems require you to know the notes on your low E and A string, but they don't require you to know the notes on the rest of the strings. I'm not saying to not learn all the notes on the fretboard, eventually do that someday, but you can do so much stuff as a guitar player just by knowing the notes on your low E and A string. So the third thing that I'd recommend would be to learn three more songs. So not the same three songs that you already learned in the first objective, now you're going to be learning easy acoustic songs. So the way to do this is you just go onto Google, you type in top 50 easy acoustic songs or top 100 easy acoustic songs or something like that. Then you have a list of songs to choose from. Pick three of them. But when you learn these songs, I want to learn how to play them only by using major or minor bar chords. It doesn't matter if the song gives you all the chords that it actually uses and it has all these open chords in it and it has seventh chords and ninth chords and sus two chords and stuff like that. It doesn't matter what the actual chords are of the song. What I want you to do is I want you to learn the song and I want you to use only major and minor bar chords. So in order to do this, you're going to need four different shapes. So you're going to need a major bar chord rooted on the low E string and a minor bar chord rooted on the low E string. You're then going to need a major bar chord rooted on the A string and a minor bar chord rooted on the A string. So let's look at the four shapes. So a major bar chord rooted on the low E string looks like this. Right now, this is an A major chord. Why is this an A major chord? Because my first finger is on the note A, right here on the low E string. This is why you want to know the notes on your low E and A string, because this will help you to identify these chords. So this is an A major chord. 
This is a G major chord. This is an F major chord. Why? Because fifth fret is the note A, the third fret is the note G, the first fret is the note F. So the next shape is going to be a minor bar chord rooted on the low E string. So this is going to be very similar to the previous shape that we just looked at. The only difference is you're going to take your middle finger, your second finger, and you're going to lift it up. That makes it a minor bar chord rooted on the low E string. So again, if I play this right here on the fifth fret, this is an A minor chord. If I play this on, say, the sixth fret, it's a B flat minor chord. You could also call that an A sharp minor chord. Because if that's the note A on the fifth fret, one higher than A is A sharp. Or if that's the note B on the seventh fret of the low E string, one lower than B is a B flat. So when it comes to these sharps and flats, one higher than is sharp, one lower than is flat. So this is all going to come as you learn your songs, as you learn the notes on your low E string and A string, as you learn how to play songs using nothing but major chords and minor chord bar chords. These are the kind of things that you're going to learn along the way. There's a method to my madness here. Do these things and you're going to learn so much stuff as you do it. So the other two shapes you're going to learn are going to be major and minor bar chords rooted on the A string now. So to do that, here's your major bar chord shape. It looks like this. This is going to be the hardest of the four shapes because you're going to have trouble getting the note to ring out on the high E string. So there's a couple ways around that. If you don't like that chord, you can just play just the... Um, and you can actually just skip playing the high E string. You can kind of like mute it out. You can do that, or you can just reduce this chord and just play the notes on the highest three strings if you want. That may be a little easier for you. Or if you don't even want to play major chords rooted on the A string like this, like right now this would be a D major chord because it's on the fifth fret. If you don't want to do that, you could also just play it on the low E string instead. So instead of playing this, you could just play it like this here on the E string. So you could play a major chord in either of those two locations, it doesn't really matter. And then the fourth and final shape is going to be the minor chord that's rooted on the A string. So if I play this right here, this is a D minor chord. Because my first finger is right there on the fifth fret of the A string, which is the note D. So that's a D minor chord. That's a C minor chord. That's a B flat minor chord otherwise known as an A-sharp minor chord. So those are the four shapes that you need. So actually putting this into practice, let me give you a quick example. All right, so when you look up a song online, this is basically how it's going to look. You're going to have your chords and you're going to have your lyrics. So whenever you see a chord, that's where you play that chord at. So on the word hey, you play the G chord. And then right between the words we and go, you switch to the C chord. And then on the word days, you play the G chord. So these things aren't always 100% accurate, but it'll get you close. Now, in order to apply what we're talking about here, ignore the chords over here. These are the actual chords of the song. Um, and also ignore any numbers or anything like that. So instead of a D7, you're just going to play a D major chord. For the example of this song for the G, I would probably play the G major chord here, right here on the third fret rooted on the low E string. And then you can switch to the C major chord by playing a major bar chord rooted on the A string if you want. So here's the note C, third fret of the A string. So you could play a major bar chord there. But if that's too hard for you to play in full bar chord form, you could either play the reduced version of this chord where you just take the high three strings of this chord and play it like this. Or you could just play a major bar chord rooted on the E string. So instead of playing a, a major bar chord starting there, you could just come to this C right here on the 8th fret of the low E string and play it like this. Alright, and then for the D major chord, again, you could either play it rooted here, or you could play it here on the 10th fret, because that's also the note D, 10th fret of the low E string. And then for the E minor chord, I'm just going to play the E minor chord rooted on the A string. So here's the note E, 7th fret of the A string, so I'll just play a minor bar chord shape right there. So for the G, for the C, for the D, and then for the E minor, I'll come up to here, to the A string. So if I was to play along with this song, I might do something. So that's G, C, G, D, instead of playing. That's playing open G, open C, 
and then that open D7 chord, but I just replaced everything with just major and minor bar chords using these movable bar chord shapes. The fourth thing I'd recommend doing is to learn two pentatonic positions. So there's five pentatonic positions in total. So if you learn two of them, you are 40% of the way to being able to solo over the entire fretboard in any key, major key, minor key, it doesn't matter. You're 40% of the way there. 40% of the way, it's not 100% of the way, but you'd be surprised at how much you can get done just by doing these two pentatonic positions. So when you learn these, I suggest doing it two different ways. Number one, just run up and down the scale patterns. Number two, improvise with a song or backing track. So I'm going to explain both of these things now. First, let me give you the two pentatonic positions. So here's one of them. It looks like this. That's one of them. Here's the other one. So one way to practice this would just be to run up and down the first box pattern. Do the same thing for the second. So just run up and down them like that and then practice them along with the backing track. So before giving you my suggested approach as to how to practice along with backing tracks, let me first talk about one thing. So Zombie Guitar, we follow the 12 key model, not the 24 key model. I made a big video about that last week if you wanna check that out. So this isn't saying that the major pentatonic scale and the minor pentatonic scale aren't different scales. They are different scales. They have different scale formulas. They have different sounds to them. But what I am saying is that instead of telling yourself, I have to learn how to play the minor pentatonic scale, and that's going to take me a year. And now I have to learn how to play the major pentatonic scale. That's going to take me another year. Instead, I'm just saying, learn the pentatonic scale. It's just one scale. It's a lot easier to think of it that way. Let's say that we are trying to play in the key of A minor. I'm putting on a backing track and I want to jam with it, and that backing track is in the key of A minor. A minor. Minor, major. Minor, major. Index finger is minor, pinky finger is major. This is how you're going to locate where these boxes are. So the backing track is in A minor. Minor. Find the note A on your low E string. There it is right there. That's the note A. Put my first finger on that because it's minor. And here's my box one. So if I know where my box one is, my box two is always going to have the same shape. And it's always just going to be relative to where the box one is located. So if this is where my box one is, I know my box two is right here. Let's say that the backing track that I want to jam with is in the key of B minor, for example. Minor. There's the note B on the seventh fret. My box one is now here. My box two is going to be the same shape relative to the first shape. So it's always going to be the exact same shape. It doesn't matter what the key is. It's the same shape. What does matter is major versus minor. So I just gave you two examples of how to locate these boxes for minor backing tracks. If you want to do it for major, you locate the box with your pinky finger. So let's say that I'm trying to jam along with the backing track that's in the key of A major. Major. There's the note A right there on the fifth fret of the low E string, but I put my pinky on it. Boom, right there. So here's my box one for A major. And then box two is always going to have the same shape relative to box one. So now that's my little soloing area for A major. Or if the backing track was in the key of E major, major, there's the note E, put my pinky finger on there, there's my box one. And then my box two is always going to be the same shape relative to box one. So after you're done mindlessly running up and down these two box patterns, that's the first way of practicing these scale patterns. The second way, as I said, is practice along with backing tracks. So I'm going to give you two examples of me doing it. The first one's going to be a minor backing track. The second one's going to be a major backing track. So there's a bunch of different ways that you could jam along with backing tracks. The whole point is to just improvise and use your ear and just kind of let the music that's inside of you come out. That's what improvising is all about. But if you want to kind of have some structure to it, then what I recommend doing is either using just quarter notes or eighth notes.
So the fifth and final thing that I would recommend to do is to add the two missing diatonic notes to each of the two pentatonic positions that you were working on previously. So what you've been doing so far is you have been playing the five note pentatonic scale. It may have looked like more than five notes because here is your box one, it spanned four frets, then your box two gave you an additional two frets. So you had this much playing range spanning six strings. So it seems like it's a whole bunch of notes that you're playing but you were just playing five notes. The pentatonic scale is five notes. That's all you were doing so far. Now you're just adding two additional notes. So you have your five pentatonic notes. Now you're adding your two additional notes. When you utilize this full seven note scale, this is called the diatonic scale. Now listen, I know there's a million different guitar scales out there, and I know you think that you have to learn all these different scales, and I know that you think that when you watch a really good player that's playing really fast and sweeping and stuff like that, I know you think that they're playing all these different crazy exotic scales, but they're not. Most of the time. I'm just going to make up a percentage here. I'm going to say 98.3% of the time, it's the pentatonic scale and the diatonic scale. Those are the two scales. They apply to all genres. They apply to all levels. It doesn't matter how amazing of a guitar player you are. You're still going to be using the pentatonic and the diatonic scale 98.3% of the time. Now, if you don't want to just be mainstream and you're trying to really produce some exotic sounds out of your playing and stuff like that, then yeah, you might want to venture off into some of these other more exotic scales. You know, look into Phrygian Dominant. I like that scale. Look into Double Harmonic Minor. I like that scale. I like the Harmonic Minor scale as well. There's some exotic scales out there. But understand that they are exotic scales. Like, that's not the stuff that you need for the bulk of what you're going to be playing. What you need for the bulk of what you're going to be playing, pentatonic, diatonic, two scales. And so uh, those are my five things to um, work on. Work on those five things. Let me know what you think about the video. Any questions or comments, feel free to ask. Thanks for watching.